Hey guys, it's Mark from Reaper Salvage, and I'm finally getting on that driver's side door that I told you about a while back. I know it's been a while, uh, but I'm gonna cover the tear down and how to make that door panel and change the mechanism out. So let's get it. All right, I'm about to do tear down, but before I do that, I'm gonna show you the parts that I have that made the door panel kind of cleaner and get rid of some of the, the dent side problems that I seen with making a flat door panel for it. So I went and got a bump side handle for like your 60, 67 through 72. And you need the mechanism and you need handle do dad and I was a little impatient when I did my design on the other side and I put my handle kind of where I wanted it and then I was like I could have had taken the factory lines uh, or maybe even the uh, the it's been so long now um, I might have been able to use the the dent side or the bump side uh, pieces that I pulled this from but the rod that, you know, hooks to, hooks to your mechanism, hooks to this, you know, come on, gets in there, you know, and it pulls and makes your, your bear claw pop. Uh, I didn't wait long enough, so I ended up using them from the tailgate because the tailgate's got longer ones, and I'm cutting them down. So you cut them and you bend them to the size you need. And I'm gonna have to take the other door panel apart to get exactly what I need. A lot of it's gonna be me taking patterns off of what I already made. Uh, but these pieces make it easier where you don't have this. So if I were to make a flat door panel, where's my Where's my armrest? I'm gonna have to make an armrest and then it just makes the door panel more complicated. So what I did was I completely delete this and use that stuff and then you put it inside the handle and it, look, it, it looks like what you've already seen on the other side, which I'll show in a second because I have to take that apart, but you use this armrest in just a second. Use this armrest. So, you know, your handle goes inside the pocket. I know you can't see anything, so let me rip it open. But it sits inside of there, and then you got your handle inside and such. So, let me get to taking this door panel off, and I'll show you a little more stuff. All right, so we got that off of there. You're gonna lose this, and you lose this. And then, you know, if you have any of these silly little snaps, which is the main reason I'm doing door panels, these silly little coat hanger snaps that as soon as you slam the door, they pop out. You can take all those out and throw them as far as you can. Now, if you do this, you have to make decisions on this guy right here. I wanted a clean look, so I took it all the way off. I got six bananas in the back, and I may put a speaker in the dash and one in the kick panel on the other side, but you can't have here anything in here anyways. So it's not a big problem to me. What I wanted was the door panels to not rattle, so I'm going to come in here with some Gooby Gone and spray all this crap down and get a lot of that off of there. This is going to get cut out because you have to have a recess for your hand to get in there to pull that handle. Uh, so you'll see that on the other side here in a minute. And uh, I'm actually probably going to make it a little bit bigger on this side because I didn't exactly like how it was on the other side. But 
I never sit over there, so I don't care. And that's why you do the passenger side first, because you learn all your mistakes and you can correct them if you're gonna be too lazy to do it again. So, and if you have customers and you do it like this, you know, on your own, you can do it for customers and give them the best product possible. So, I'm gonna get this pulled off and then I'm gonna go get some Gooby Gone and pull these little tabs out and get us all cleaned up. And then we'll move on to the next part of this. All right, you have that all cleaned off, or as good as it's gonna get. Somebody put some uh, duct tape on here uh, a long time ago, and it didn't want to come off. So, or it's residue, whatever, didn't want to come off. So that's not gonna come off. But a lot of that's gonna get cut out anyway. We'll see in a minute. I'm gonna start disassembling the other side, and you'll see all that. Here we go. Okay, as you can see, I gotta do this, dip here, weld that in, Get this off of here. I've gotta mount this piece, it mounts with a bolt right there. And then I gotta cut these three holes here. And then that will put my handle mechanism and my armrest mechanism on there then i gotta do do all this insane amount this insane amount of uh rib nutting and aligning the door panel so next thing is i'm gonna take next thing is i'll take that out pull this out and pull that bar out of there and see how long it needs to be and measure this location and then I could start cutting out this location on the other side. I might make a template off of stuff that's still located so I can kind of make this match that as best I can. Then once this is on there, I can make that piece and weld it in and yeah making that getting it on there and then the door will be done then it'll operate and then i just gotta dress it up by putting a cover on it and i gotta pull this off this the other speaker so i'll pull the speakers off before i make the door panel I'll pull the speaker off make my two caps and uh and plug up this hole up here. So, cause I'm gonna have these door panels uh, powder coated. So 
I want to do everything one time and be done with it. Here we go. <sighs> All right, so I got the one that I made and the one that came off the tailgate. And once again, if you make your door handle in the factory location, your, your aftermarket piece in factory location, if that makes sense. And you take the factory one instead of the one that you make because you're moving too fast, you can be closer, but I didn't do that. So I take the tailgate one that I had off of a janky tailgate, and I'll take that, and I'll nip this end off, and I'll bring it down here, and I'll just make another one that way. Sharpie and mark out how long it needs to be. So, one point, bend, and we'll cut and bend that. Lop this off here, and I got the locking tabs. Unlike the, the, these just slip in and hold in place. They have just a, a round retainer. They don't have a piece that actually snaps down onto the line that holds it in place. Well, it's a whole lot easier the other way. If you've seen, I had on the driver's side taking apart the factory stuff, I had to take the bear claw loose over there, I don't have to do that because I made it like the, the other way. So, here we go. All right, so I got that in there. Got it pin or bolted in right there. Um, I, I have to, I have to notch out and bring that one in closer. I have the, the mechanism in. I don't have the handle on. The handle bolt's here, but I need a little bit of clearance right there. And I kind of got it etched out. Then the handle can go on there. And then from there, I can see where I need to cut out up here. And uh, it functions, so like you lock it, push up, unlocks. That's all you need. Handle, pull this way, pushes up, he's peasy. So I'm gonna get that notched out, get the handle on there, and then I'll come back and cut the, make my perimeter of how much I gotta cut out from up here to make the hand the res the recess so you can get your hand in there so you're not just up against the panel trying to scratch your fingers in there but I'm gonna get on that now All right, I got it on there. So, and it works just like before. Now, I have to make room for my fingers because there ain't much room for my fingers, let alone once I bolt some fancy panel that I spend a lot of time making look purdy. Just be less room. 
So, gotta make room for this. I'll make room in the fancy panel and, you know. Oh, another thing, I almost forgot. I found my template from uh, the last one. So, it'll go, it lines up with, I got all the holes lined up. Uh, it lines up with uh, these two bolts and then it tells me where the handle will bolt on so I can cut all the squares and holes for that for the uh, armrest to go on. So I'm probably gonna do this next because it's a lot easier than cutting that thing out. But that's still gonna get cut out and used. So I'll do this next. And then, then I'll cut that piece out. So I'll show you that now. All right, got the handle on there, still works. It interferes with that a little bit, but with that panel on it, it's gonna pull it farther off, so it'll give it more room to open up. I ran into the same problem on the other side, so. With the panel on there, it'll raise it up just enough. So now, we finally gotta cut this piece out. So I'm gonna take all that shit back off, Cut the piece out. And I'll pull kind of a template or a roundabout where I need to cut off the other side. But I want this side bigger because I still was, like I said, I wasn't happy with how that side is. But visually, that side works and there's no point in changing it over there considering I don't ever sit over there. And, uh, but. It would bother me if it was over here, so. But it would function, but it would bother me. All right.
Stage one. Love my soap dish. Soap dish. Put this on there, got some holes drilled. Uh, it goes on there, got, got all my, my holes for around the edge for where my, my bolts are gonna go. Got all those popped on there. Uh, and I did my outline of my handle. There we go. Did my outline of my handle. I gotta do the outline for the finger pocket and uh, these holes don't really matter right now as far as, you know, being perfect because a lot of it's going to move a little bit. And I don't want to sharpen them up and then they move and then I got to sharpen them again. So I'm going to leave them the way they are and they might move into a better position. They might work, move into a worse position, but I guarantee you if I sharpen them into the shape I want them to be, they're going to move into a position I don't want them to be. So... 
I'm going to put the whole pattern out and then I got to lay out what goes when. Because you want to do your cross hatch first because it'll be flat and everything's going to curve. And you want that to be able to curve because that's what gives you your pillows, your pillow look, whatever. But, and then I got to flatten it back over with my calibrated knee. And then from there, I can do, you'll do these, and then you'll do this edge, this edge right here on the top and the bottom, and this one, and that one, and that one, and this one, and then hit it with the planishing hammer here. And then you'll do the dimple die for these, and then this one. I think that's the order it goes. So I'm gonna get the pattern laid out. And I'm supposed to have a helper coming. We'll see. Last time didn't get a helper, had to figure it out. So if the helper comes, he'll be holding. If he don't come, then I gotta get out the jack stands and the table. But uh, let's get after it. be rolling done but it's a damn potato chip and I mean there's ways around that because you could go through and pre-stretch every single straight line but I'm not that great at bead rolling or not bead rolling uh, the English wheel so rolling a straight line uh, generally ain't gonna happen especially when I can bead roll a straight line and putting this many bolts in this thing anyways is gonna slowly pull it into shape anyways. That's how the other side is, that's how this side is. And I'm gonna powder coat them looking like potato chips. So the door ain't gonna move, but that panel will force itself into the shape and you'll your eyes will look at it and go, ah, that looks good. But I got the handle on and like I was saying before, I, I knew things were gonna move. So we're, we have a little bit of overhang on this inner edge and I can go through 
and snip that off uh, with the shear. Uh, but these sides seem good, but I didn't want to cut that off before and then be too short. It, you can always take off, but it, it gets a little tricky when you're trying to add back on. Uh, same with these holes. I knew they were going to move a little bit, so I didn't square them up. So this one, I have to round out a little bit, and these, I got to dance a little bit. But I pretty much can put the stuff on and uh, it be where I want it to be. Um, but uh, everything feels fine. Everything's... I can get my hand in there, you know. Even this slot, the slot that's in there, needs to be opened up because all I did was drill two holes that were, you know, made a snowman. Uh, but the next step will be, I guess I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, start drilling holes for rivet, uh, for, uh, for rib nuts and start putting those on after that. Um, I probably had to take this off a couple of times um, because of drilling the rib nuts and install or drilling and then putting the rib nuts in. But uh, as for right now, uh, I'm trying to get to the end of the day so I can uh, drop these off to be powder coated. So uh, as far as I get in the next hour or so is as far as I'm going to get about installing it because when I come back to it I'm gonna at the end of the day these are going to the powder coater six one half dozen another but if I don't get all the rib nuts put in then oh well I, I don't have to do anything else to this I do have to trim that edge like I said but that's it and I can only trim it so far but it's already at the top of that that heel so trimming it to the extent as far as I can trim it is uh, probably gonna be good enough or good enough for me you know and yeah so I'll get it over on the time lapse and you can see that Well, I'm about to wrap this up. It's all installed. Just gotta put the handle on. I might have to wall or that just a hair more. But I wanted to go ahead and put this on there. Test fitment. So it's all good to go. Um, got all this on there. One shot kit, one kill on putting these in. Didn't have to come back and uh, dress any holes. Some of them are just a hair off. Like you can see, like if you get this close, you can see that there's just a little bit showing, but it's handmade, you know? I, I ain't a machine. You're gonna have that with some stuff. And uh, 
So I wanted to fit them before I took them to the powder coater. I'm gonna cut that. And, uh, but everything else seems pretty uh, straightforward. Um, like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, feel free to uh, hit me up in the comments.